piercing shrieks of anguish fill the land. Childless and brokenhearted, they now sought to leave, but they were told they had forfeited their right and were given a choice between baptism or slavery. And after enduring all they did, after leaving their beloved Spain with all their wealth and ease, they were submitted to baptism now in the hope of being reunited with their children. Thousands were sold as slaves. Yet prior to being sold, they were submitted to tortures, cruelties, to revolting, to repulsive, to heartrending, to be here now. All Jewish children below 14 years of age were to be torn from their parents' arms or were beaten with clubs, dragged into a church and baptized. Those under three years of age were given to Christians to be raised as slaves. Those between three and 10 years of age were put on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas called the Highest Paradise, or the Isles of Destruction. The Jews have experienced fully the unequal skill of the church in administering pain. Mothers cast themselves at the feet of the tyrants and pitifully beg to be taken with their babies. They were heartlessly thrust aside. Hundreds of mothers, mad with despair, ran behind the ships as they carried off the idols of their heart and perished in the waves. The same fortitude with which the exiled people had borne so many. The Moors and Jews of Spain by Joseph Kroskoff. Shalom fam, it's your brother Benaiah Ben Israel Coming to you with the lesson The Name of Judah Man fam, it looks like the world is in trouble I mean, big, big trouble We got nations rising against nations Threats of nukes being dropped Threats of unprecedented destruction And nations around the world preparing for war We're Talking about DEFCON 1 and heightened nuclear readiness What's going on fam? How did we get here? Look, just when you thought the pandemic which caused mass deaths around the world was over, just when the world thought everything was gonna go back to normal, war, war breaks out. And not just any war, a war that has the potential to be the start of World War III. And people are wondering, man, how did we get here? <laughs> well, to figure out why the world seems to be on this non-stop spiral to destruction, we need to go back a few years to the year 2019. That's right fam, mama there goes that date again. The date which marked 400 years of slavery and oppression of the so-called Negro here in the States. 400 years of servitude to the daughter of Babylon. And maybe you're thinking, well so-called Negroes were over here in the Americas well before 1619. You are correct. In fact, slaves were brought to places like Brazil and Central America well before 400 years ago. 
How come nothing of this nature, of this magnitude, occurred when they hit their 400 years? Exactly. That's exactly the question the world needs to be asking. Why? Why is it that when you hit your 400 years, all hell broke loose? That's the question the world needs to be asking. If you don't know who the people of prophecy are in the Bible, you're going to be lost. Look fam, after 2019, the US was a nation in turmoil. Trump was being impeached twice, the Capitol was being ransacked, worldwide protests over George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and black persecutions were raging, and least we forget, a global pandemic of biblical proportions, which killed millions. And least we not forget, the places hardest hit by the pandemic were the European nations. Even in Africa, which was largely spared from the pandemic, saw outbreaks in Africa in places which had large European populations. What's up with that fam? Can you see the hand in the most high? And don't forget the signs which manifest. We saw rivers turn into blood, mass numbers of fish dying in the rivers and in the oceans. We saw swarms of locusts devouring crops around the world, increased earthquakes, whole nations being scorched by fires. Do you remember Australia? Do you remember fires that scorched the West Coast? Historic fires in regards of sheer number of acres burned and lives lost. That's right fam, all this after 2019. All this after you hit your 400 years. After that, a blood moon, a sign was shown in the heavens it was the longest solar eclipse in over 648 years. And just when you thought things couldn't get any worse, war, war breaks out. <laughs> Man, how long fam, how long will it take for the world to realize what and who they're dealing with? All this happening while the Most High Yah's Great Awakening is taking place. We saw great numbers of so-called Negroes around the world awakening to their true identity, awakening to their history and their purpose and destiny spelled out in prophecy. Hallelujah. No matter how many dirty cats they send your way, the Most High Yah's Great Awakening can be stopped. You see world, no more politics, no more crafty counsels, time's up. It's time to pray for forgiveness and to give back what was stolen. I'm just saying, it's better to settle up now rather than settle up later. My guess, the longer you wait, the more it's gonna cost you. Your choice. Fam, the revelation of who we are in our place in prophecy is foretold in the scriptures. And shout out to the camps for teaching this on the streets. The revelation of our history before slavery and our blood ties to the true bruise were verified in old books. You see fam, books published before and during the time of slavery told factual stories of black brews, black doly cosophallic Jews, aka Jews who had heads shaped like present day Negroes. Archaeology along with stone monuments such as the Lakesh Relief depicted a woolly headed tribe of Judah. To make it plain, the tribe of Judah were black Negroes. And yes, that's black as in black as defined in the dictionary. Don't be extra fam. We even have DNA results which match DNA extracted from ancient archaeological sites in Spain and Portugal and Israel. Look, the gig is up. The fat lady is singing bars, the rental car is turned in, and the Gentiles done checked out. Vacation's over. But why? Why is it over now? Why do we see judgment now? Who are you? Well, it's more like who's here and it's something we alluded to in previous videos and, and shout out to the big chiefs Moshe and Yahusha for putting this truth in an epic movie series called Reclaiming the Throne. Double honors to the big chiefs. Fam, to determine why all hell broke loose when you hit your 400 years, we need to see who the Spanish and Portuguese brews are. As the following reference reads and it reads, King Alonso, which we may learn if we can believe it, that a king of Spain who had assisted Nebuchadnezzar in reducing Jerusalem brought an enormous population into Spain, all from either the family of David 
or at least from the tribe of Judah, and that the royal family resided first in Seville, then in Granada, adding that the exiles afterwards had their numbers greatly increased by fugitives from the desolation of the second temple. And the next reference reads, and it reads, the Spanish Jews maintain that they had been transported hither after the destruction of the temple by the Babylonian conqueror, Nebuchadnezzar. Certain Jewish families, the Ibn Dawus and the Abarbanels, boasted descent from the royal house of David and maintained that their ancestors had been settled since the time immemorial, partly in the districts of Lucina and partly in the environs of Toledo and Seville. Spanish and Portuguese brews claim their descent from the house of David. And it is the house of King David, along with the nobles and the governors of Judah, who will serve as the first fruits coming out of captivity to rebuild Jerusalem, just as they did when they came out of Babylon. Let's check it out. Let's check out who came out of Babylon to rebuild Jerusalem. Why is it important? Because the same people who returned from Babylon to rebuild Jerusalem the first time will do it again. Nehemiah chapter seven, verse six reads, these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon had carried away and came again to Jerusalem and to Judah, everyone unto his city. Verse seven reads, who came with Zerubbabel. Now we pause and note here that Zerubbabel was part of the group who returned from captivity. Let's now look at the lineage of Spanish and Portuguese brews to see their relationship to Zerubbabel. For this, we will review one of the many ancestry branches of Spanish and Portuguese brews. Now, notice King David and King Solomon are listed as forefathers of the Spanish and Portuguese brews. However, if you drop down to the line with the Roman numeral three, you'll notice that the third name on that line coming out of Babylon is Zerubbabel, spelled with an S. In other words, fam, Spanish and Portuguese brews are descended from Zerubbabel. They are descendant from the people who returned from captivity to rebuild Jerusalem, just like the Limba in South Africa, which is why your DNA <laughs> matches the Limba. And ironically, the brews of Spain and Portugal went into captivity. How do we know that they went into captivity? Well, further down the list, you'll see the name Jachaya, which is the name Yaya. The Yayas become known as the Negroes, and we can find slaves named Yaya on transatlantic slave ship manifests. They were literally on the ship, listed by name. How did they get there? Check this out, fam. Let's take a closer look at the Transatlantic Slave Trade Database. Now, once you've navigated to the webpage, click on the link located at the top labeled People of the Atlantic Slave Trade. That's People of the Atlantic Slave Trade. And then click on the word database underneath. This will take you to two databases. One database called African Origins, which lists details of roughly 93,605 Africans taken from captured slave ships or African trading posts. The other database shown is called Ocean's Kinsfolk, which contains roughly 63,000 enslaved African Americans forcibly transported to New Orleans in the 1800s. <laughs> we find something very interesting when we look into this particular database of slaves. Now, let's select this database and click on the word apply or the apply button located near the bottom. This generates a list of slaves sent to New Orleans. However, a groundbreaking discovery is made when we simply look up all the names on the first page to see if their last names are Sephardic brew names. <laughs> you guessed it, fam. Shockingly, most of the slave names on the first page are Sephardic brew surnames or Sephardic brew last names. I'll say it another way. These slaves were called by Sephardic brew names. It's interesting, fam, 
We often wondered what happened to the thousands of black Sephardic Brews who made it to America. Many writers will say that they simply disappeared. However, thanks to this database, we now see that there were people with Sephardic brew names being transported as slaves down to New Orleans. We know Portuguese law specifically targeted the House of Judah. We know the Inquisition law of expulsion specifically targeted nobles. We know Lancados directed African chiefs by Portuguese law to target brews. And also, your DNA confirms this history by matching ancient DNA extracted from Spain and Portugal, specifically in Granada, the city of the brews. Not only that, the brothers of Teo Ministry and Zion Dynasty pointed this out. Our DNA matches DNA extracted from Albiacin, which was the home for the brews before they were expelled in 1492. Shout out to my fellow laborers in this work. Granada was the second city settled by the descendants of King David. It's funny, while much of our history was hidden, one thing that remained in plain sight was the DNA story of the daughters of Judah. When we look at the DNA map of the so-called African-American woman, <laughs> we see DNA in Lower Spain and Portugal and Northern Africa, the place where the Jews fled to after being expelled from Spain and Portugal. And we also see DNA of the African-American woman in Babylon, the place where Judah served in captivity. Mm. Evidence of who we are and where we came from runs both deep and wide. Take our names, for example. Many so-called African-Americans today are walking around with Spanish and Portuguese brew surnames or last names, and they don't even know it. And there's more. Many so-called African-Americans who took DNA tests, whether it be through 23andMe, Ancestry.com, MyHeritage.com, and more, many of these DNA reports list DNA cousins or relatives within the report. When looking at the list of DNA cousins in these reports, we are finding our DNA cousins <laughs> have Spanish and Portuguese blue names. In fact, my DNA report, the first page has all Spanish and Portuguese brew names. Yes, we are those Negroes. And fam, you know, the word Negro doesn't just mean black. The word Negro is a Sephardic Jewish name. So we were literally being called a Sephardic Jewish name here in the States with DNA which matches Spain and Portugal. And we didn't even know it. Long story short, fam, we have documented proof that the descendants of Zerubbabel eventually landed in the U.S. in places such as Charleston, South Carolina. The descendants of those who came out of Babylon, who came out of captivity to rebuild Jerusalem, and most high willing, they would do it again. That's why all hell broke loose when you hit your 400 years. It's because of who you are. So fam, get ready for the times to come. Focus on Yahuwah and stay in prayer for look up. Your redemption is not. All right, fam. Well, before we wrap up, I wanted to review some important information about our lesson today. One of the things I want to share with you is I want to show you a couple of different ways where you can search to see if your name is a Sephardic brew or a Spanish and Portuguese brew last name. You know, we want to see if you're walking, if you're one of those people that's walking around here with a Sephardic brew last name and you don't even know it. Or maybe you have a whole family tree of Sephardic brews or people that would have Sephardic brew last names and don't even know it. We want for you to start to figure that out. We want to walk you through the process of discovering that. Right. In order to do that, I'm going to share with you a couple, actually probably four or five references that I use to perform this search. And so feel free to make these pieces of information your own, these repositories your own, but these are things that you can go to to look up to see if you are one of those those uh, so-called African-Americans that's walking around here with the Sephardic brew last name and don't even know it. 
Hallelujah. All right. So the first place that you can go to is a website called Sephardim.co. That's Sephardim.co, right? You can see it on the screen. And in this website, you can look up the names or your the surnames to see if your name or someone in your in your family has a name that can be found in this database. Now, keep in mind that the names are sometimes spelled differently. So you have to look for different variations of your name. In other words, look for your name being spelled in different ways, right? Uh, look for the phonetic spelling of your name. Like for instance, if we were to look up the word, uh, the name Brian, right? So Brian could be B-R-Y-A-N or B-R-I-A-N or even B-R-I-O-N, right? So Brian can be spelled many different ways. And so when you go to this website, you just have to look at, look for different variations of your name in this database. So in other words, if you go here and you don't necessarily see your name spelled exactly in here, you may have to search around for it to find it, right? The second source that I use is this book right here is called When Scotland Was Jewish, right? So when Scotland was Jewish, you can actually see they use DNA evidence, archeology, span analysis of migration, as well as cemeteries and some other things. They also show that they use family records as well. I, and this is a, a Kindle version that's showing on your screen. So you don't necessarily have to buy the, the hard copy. Actually, actually, the Kindle version might be better because you can actually perform searches on it. And that's what I do. So you can you know get this book, purchase this book, buy the Kindle version, and then what you can do, you can do the exact same thing you, you, know, you were going to do with the, um, with the website, search the book for Sephardic root names. And make sure you take a look to see what context that name is listed in, right? Because sometimes it'll say, hey, this is a, a French uh, Sephardic name, or hey, this is a name that's associated with Bruce. You know, you'll want to know that, all right? So that's the second source that you can use to look up to see if your name is a Sephardic brew name. And then the third source you can use, and this is an actual physical book, it's an actual Sephardic brew dictionary. And I will warn you, this dictionary costs about, right now as I'm looking at uh, the, the book on Amazon, it's, it costs $165.97. So, you know, if it's a little too steep for you, I understand, but just wanna throw this out here that, hey, this book is out here that you can also use. It's a dictionary that you can use to look up to see if your name or a phonetic spelling of your name is in the database, right? To see if you're one of those people that's walking around with a Sephardic brute uh, last name and don't even know it. All right, so that's three. The fourth one is Jewish Gen. So Jewish Gen is a uh, database that you can also search to see if your name is in a database. And you, you can see on the records on the screen, it says, you know, welcome to Jewish Gen, unified search, explore millions of records from around the world, including more than 3.69 million records related to the Holocaust and 4.1 4 million burial records. So they have a ton of records in here that you can search to see if your name shows up as a Sephardic brew name, right? Or as a Jewish name, all right? So that's the fourth one. But now I'm gonna show you yet another one. This is uh, number five. And for this one, let's, let's go to Ancestry.com. And when you go to Ancestry.com, let's scroll all the way to the right. And what we're looking for is where it says special collections off to the right. And it's all the way at the bottom. And you'll see where it says Jewish family history right? Jewish family history. So let's click on the Jewish family history collection. And this is another place where you can you that you can use to search to see if your name or your family's name is a Sephardic brew name, right? Or if it shows up in the records. And just to show you the information that's behind this ancestry site, it says, discover your story at our Jewish family history records. We partner with, and of course, Jewish Gen, which is what we just came from, American Jewish Joint Distribution Committee and the American Jewish Historical Society and Miriam Werner Roots to Roots Foundation Incorporated, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, the USC Shoah Foundation and Arrowson Archives to create a collection of over 20 million Jewish records. That's 20 million Jewish records. So they got, they have quite a few Jewish records in here. And the key to this site, I encourage you to put your family's name in this field. Like don't necessarily, well, I guess you could, you could actually put the first name and last name if you want to, but just think about your grandparents, your great, great grandparents, uh, put their names in here and see if it comes up. Put their names in here and then what you're going to do you're going to search the jewish family records i 
I want you to see if your family comes up under the Jewish family history records. All right. And, you know, be sure to make it put a comment in the uh, in the comment section on the video if you if you get a hit on that. All right. So I give you uh, five places that you can go to to search to see if, you know, one is if your name is a Sephardi brew name, like if you're one of those folks walking around here with the Sephardi brew name or family name and don't even know it, you know, you can you can use that as well as uh, this last one, which is an ancestry page where you can actually uh, search to see if your family is listed in the Jewish family history archives. You'll be surprised. You might be surprised. I'll, I'll just leave it at that, fam. All right. All right. So now that we have that out the way, so now you have the the all the places that you can go to, or at least some of the places you can go to to look up to see if you know if your name or your family names in this database. Another nugget I'm going to give you, and it has to do with your DNA, right? So let's go over to DNA. Let's say, for instance, if you took DNA, you took a DNA test. You had your DNA report run, and I'm going to show you uh, my DNA report now. So this is on a website called My Heritage. I believe this is one that I actually uploaded my DNA from Ancestry.com over to this website. But in any case, you know, let's say for instance, if you use My Heritage, right, and you can actually do this on multiple DNA sites, and I'm going to show you on this page on this site, but I'm also going to show you how to do it on Ancestry.com. Right. You can actually also do this on GEDmatch. Right. So multiple places you can do this and even 23 and me. You can do it on 23 and me. So you'll get the principle here. So pull. I want you to pull up your DNA report. Right. Wherever it is, pull it up. You know, let's go to overview. Right. Once you pull your DNA report up, go to DNA matches. Right. So DNA matches is going to give you a list of the people that match your DNA. These are your genetic cousins. These are these are your for real, for real cousins, right? All right. So I'm sure you probably already saw this, right? You already went to DNA message. You probably already saw the, you know, so a bunch of people who you don't know pop up in your DNA match. But here's the kicker, fam. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take a look at the matches. And remember those four sources, four to five sources I gave you? as far as being able to look to see if a surname or last name is a Sephardic brew name. I want you to go through each. Let's let's just take the first page of your matches. Go through the first page of your matches and see if the the last names are Sephardic or Spanish and Portuguese brew names. See if any of those names show up in those uh, those databases. And just to give you uh, an example, like, for instance, on my page, and I have roughly, um, and I actually thought it was all, I think it's, it's pretty much all of it, but on my page, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten 10, um, 10 results on this one page. And family, pretty much all of them are Sephardic brew names. Right? Just imagine fam, if your DNA matches were coming back with all Sephardic brew names, what does that say about you fam, right? That means that you Sephardic brew, right? That's just another piece of the puzzle that confirms that you are a Sephardic or Spanish and Portuguese brew. All right. So you got it. Go to your DNA matches. Look up the last names. You know, just take a handful of those last names. Go over to those four to five repositories I shared with you uh, just a few minutes ago and check to see if those last names are there. Right. So this is uh, my heritage. So on my DNA report. You know, like I said, pretty much all the names of my first page were all Sephardic brew names. OK, and then the other place where I, I uploaded my DNA was Ancestry.com. So if I go over to Ancestry.com and I do pretty much do the same thing, I do go over to Ancestry. I click on DNA. I click on DNA matches. And again, it's going to give me a list of all the folks that are in my family tree. Now, a lot of my immediate family has taken Ancestry DNA. So I'm actually going to skip my immediate family names and then go down to down to the place in the list where I don't recognize the names. And once again, fam, when I look up these names, they are Sephardic brew names. They are Sephardic brew names. I'm telling you, fam, that is the pattern. That is the major pattern that we're seeing in these DNA matches. So I uh, just want to give you a challenge, fam. If you have time, go back through your DNA matches, 
look those names up and just to see if they are Sephardic brew names. Hallelujah. All right. All right, fam. Well, hopefully that'll, that'll help you out. Feel free to make comments and just to share if you were or were not able to find any of your um, your, your relatives in any of these uh, repositories. I would be surprised if you don't, especially if you're a, a so-called African-American. But just give it a try, fam. Just give it a try. This is like I said, this is one more piece of the puzzle to prove that you are who you are. And fam, I just got to tell you, you have way more proof than almost anybody else when it comes to this truth. Like when it comes to you being being Judah, when it comes to you being a Spanish and Portuguese brew, you have way more information to prove who you are than the other side has to prove who they are. Glory and praises to the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. All right, fam. Well, thank you for tuning in. Now, I'd like to take this time to thank all of our Patreon supporters for letting the Most High Yah use you to help make these videos possible. So on behalf of all the viewers, all the listeners, as well as myself, I would like to say thank you for lending your resources and your time and your efforts. Thank you so much, fam. And I would also like to say a big thank you to all of our brothers and sisters who like and share these videos. Your efforts help get this message all around the world. And last but not least, I also like to say a huge thank you to our prayer warriors. Hallelujah. Thank you to all of our praying brothers and sisters who continue to lift me and my family and the whole house of Israel up in your thoughts and prayers. We are going to need those prayers in these last days, family. Hallelujah. Well, family, I won't keep you any longer. Stay blessed and prayed up for these end times to come. Hallelujah. All right, family. And so on.